All right, turning to the last page in the geometry book, uh, we come to the last of the basic geometry creation exercises. This is a little bit more complex lathe part. Um, and on this, we're going to look at uh, angle trajectory. Uh, in most cases in Gibbs Cam, using geometry expert, complementary angles work just fine. So you could define this line as being at either zero degrees or 180, and it really doesn't make any difference. So the software will correct it if you close and then reopen Geometry Expert. The angle will be corrected to uh, be the angle that the flow of the line is going. So it's going from this feature this way, so it would actually be 180 degrees. But zero degrees would create correct geometry, and then... Um, Gibbs Cam would, would correct the angle to, to match the direction it's flowing in. Uh, this line here uh, could be drawn at 45 degrees, but the actual angle would be 225 because of the direction that the flow is moving. So we're going to be looking at how to, um, how to enter these values, how to, how to look at an angle the way that it's dimensioned, and and determine what the trajectory is. Now, the only line on this part really that uh, the trajectory is critical is this one right here. And that's because it's coming out of a partially undefined circle here. Uh, so the angle is going to determine which side of that circle the, the line gets attached to. Um, so, or actually which side of the line the circle gets attached to in this particular case. Because the line will be fully defined, the circle will only be partially defined. So, with that in mind, let me jump over to Gibbs Cam for a minute. We've got a part three inch diameter. I'm just going to leave the three and a half inch stock that we have from the previous exercise. Uh, it finishes at 3.8, we'll just say it's four inches long. So, uh, I'm going to jump back over to Gibbs Cam, make sure this part is saved, create a new part called hub and really the only thing we're going to that I'm going to change here is going to be the length of our stock uh, I want to go to minus four for the time being uh, for the back of the stock uh, these numbers can stay the same tool change can stay the same uh, I'm going to hit save and X out of this window. And I'm gonna open Geometry Expert. And the, what I wanna show you is if I draw a circle, for example, if I draw a clockwise circle with a half inch radius at, uh, sorry, that was meant to be a clockwise circle with a half inch radius at Z minus two and X zero. If the next feature is a 90 degree line and I don't give it a Z position, this circle, the flow of it is going clockwise. So coming off of that at 90 degrees, going straight up the screen is going to attach to this side like that. Whereas if I said minus 90 or 270 degrees, it's going to attach to that side because the flow of the circle is going this way. All right. Now, if I were to um, make this... Um, if, I, if I were to make that minus 90 but make this minus 2.5, then the software will know that it's over here. If I were to close this out and reopen it, this angle would then say 90 instead of minus 90. Uh, the same thing if the line was defined and the circle was partially undefined. Uh, it would connect to one side or the other of the line based on the direction of the circle and whether the line was going, in this case, 90 or minus 90. So uh, there are situations where the trajectory or the direction that the line is flowing matters. Uh, and again, in the case of this drawing, it's only one place, but I'm gonna use this drawing as a, a chance to practice setting those angles. Now. Let's look at this angle, for example. It's 35 degrees off of vertical. So the way that I tend to think of this in my mind, and just bear with me for a second, I'm just gonna sketch something real quick. I imagine an arrow that starts out 
pointing straight out to the right like this. So if I select that, what I want to do is, is locate the, the quadrant, if you will, that my angle is being referenced from. So in this case, it's being angled from a vertical line going straight up at, uh, straight up at 90 degrees. Uh, so I'm going to start out by, um, in my mind again, rotating this, let me get rid of that, uh, rotating this 90 plus 35. So the 90 degrees takes me to here and then the 35 additional degrees takes me to there which is the trajectory of this line here now this line on the other hand is 15 degrees off of vertical but the trajectory is going down into this quadrant down here so the way that I would think of that starting from here would be minus 90. That gets me to the quadrant that the line is referenced from, and then minus another 15. So minus 90 minus 15 gets me to this trajectory, which is going to match this line here. So keeping that in mind, uh, if, if that helps you to, to look at these lines and, and calculate their trajectory, uh, then by all means use it. If you have a different way of doing it, uh, you know, by all means use that. If you want to just do this part and not worry about trajectory except on this one line, uh, I guess you can do that as well. Uh, but we're gonna try to follow the trajectory for pretty much all of this. Some of the vertical and horizontal lines I may not worry so much about. But uh, anything that's at an angle other than vertical or horizontal, I'm definitely going to match the trajectory on that. Uh, the last thing I want to note is that on quite a few of these lines over here, uh, their Z value down here is referenced off this 2-inch diameter. So you're going to see a lot of 2-inch diameter references for some of these lines uh, when we get to that part. So we're going to start, as always, at Z0 for the front face. I'm going to draw every piece of geometry, including the fillets and the chamfers, uh, as we go, uh, just for the exercise. So starting at 0, enter. And then we have a 60 thousandths chamfer. So I'm going to come over and do a chamfer with a length of 60 thousandths. We won't actually see that chamfer until we finish the part since it's attached to the first piece of geometry. Then we have this one inch diameter. Then we have this line. Now this line cannot be created as a chamfer because the line in front of it and the line after it are parallel to each other. So there's no corner between this line and this line to create a chamfer. So we're just gonna draw this as a line. It's 45 degrees off of 180, so it's going to be 180 plus 45. So jumping back over here, we're going to make the angle 180 plus 45, and I usually do the math right here. Uh, and it passes through a point. That corner right there is on that one inch diameter, and it's defined as being at Z minus 840. So Z minus 0.840 on that one inch diameter. All right, now the next piece of geometry is this horizontal line at an 880 diameter. The software has assumed a 90 degree line, so I'm gonna change that to 180 on an 880 diameter. Next we have this vertical line that is at Z minus one. We have this horizontal line at an inch and a quarter diameter. We have the front of this groove, which is a hundred thousandths wide, and the back of the groove is at minus 1.3. So if I wanted to, I could enter minus 1.3 plus 0.1. The root of that groove is a, an inch fifty thousandths diameter. 
The back of the groove again is at minus 1.3. And then we get back to this inch and a quarter diameter here. Right now we get into the fun part. We have this circle here, it's a clockwise circle, and the radius is 0 0.2. I really, you know, I could, I could give it a Z value, uh, well I could give it an X value easily, but I'm not going to give it anything, uh, I'm just going to tell it that it is a clockwise circle with a radius of 0.2, that's all that I'm going to say about it. Alright, now we get to this line, which is referenced off of 90, it's 35 degrees past vertical, so 35 past 90. So in the angle, I'm going to say 90 plus 35, and then a point that it passes through is that corner right there, which is on that 2 inch diameter at Z minus 2.4. So Z minus 2.4 on that 2 inch diameter. Now we get to that two inch diameter. Then we get to this line, which is at minus 90, minus 15. Minus 90, minus 15. And it passes through this corner, which is also on that two inch diameter, but it's at Z minus two and a half. So Z minus 2.5, also on that two inch diameter. Then we have the root of that groove that's on a 1.7 diameter. And if I wanted the trajectory to be right, that'd be 180 degrees on a, I forgot what the dimension was, 1.7 diameter. Right now we get to this line, which is 25 off of vertical, but it's 90 plus 25 to get the trajectory correct. So I'm going to come over here, 90 plus 25, that passes through that corner, which is also on that 2 inch diameter, and it is at Z minus 2.8. So minus 2.8 on that 2 inch diameter. And then we get to another little piece of that 2 inch diameter. So lots of 2 inch diameters through that section there. Then we have a corner here that's 100 thousandths radius. I'm just going to do that as a fillet. It could also be a clockwise circle, but I'm just going to do a fillet of 0.1. And then the space at Z minus 3 inches. And then we get to the three inch diameter OD. We get to the back face of the part, which is at Z minus 3.8. Our through hole is a half inch diameter. The bottom of the front counterbore is at Z minus a half. And then that front counterbore is a 5 eighths diameter. And then we close our shape out. And this is the geometry that we need for machining this part. So I'm going to save this. Uh, I'm going to do this again. I'll start a separate video for this, but I'm going to do this again at speed because that took a little bit. It took about 15 minutes, I think, to do it explaining everything that I was doing along the way. Uh, I would like for you all to draw this part. Uh, we will definitely be putting toolpath on this. Um, try to ensure that your trajectories are correct, especially on this line. If you don't get your trajectory correct on this one, uh, it will not come out correctly.